Hello, my name is Jonathan Jesse, Practice Prince with ITS Partners. I want to thank you for spending time today to watch the uh, this video about semantic data loss prevention. Uh, got a couple other videos um, in, in this series. The first one is an overview of semantic DLP. Uh, the second one is uh, dealing with creating and setting up policies within the semantic DLP product. Uh, this video is going to focus on uh, data at rest. Uh, setting up different targets, uh, configuring a data at rest server um, in the scans and how that works, and uh, take a look at some, some data at rest incidences. So let's go ahead and jump right into the uh, demo. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or give me a call, and I'd love to have a further conversation with you. Thank you. All right, so I'm logging in and getting ready to go. Um, if you've watched the other videos, we've already talked a little bit about the screen. If you haven't, uh, real quick introduction. This is a dashboard that shows me my uh, data at the endpoint and where things go. Um, but let's go ahead and start talking about data at rest. Within my system here, I have two servers set up. One set up as my management platform and one set up for endpoint and also network discover. And I want to talk about those two here for just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and click on my network discover because one thing that I want to look at is I want to start talking about um, how we scan and, and, and how that scan works. So within the system, based on uh, the hardware and spec hardware specifications of your network discover box, uh, you can set up multiple parallel scans and processing. Um, as you can see here that I have, um, I have it set up to be able to scan two targets at the same time. And this is where I would go in and change that. I just want to uh, highlight that real quick before we actually jump right into them. So, let's go ahead and go to Manage. Discover allows me to, to, to take a look at my uh, different uh, Discover scans that I have running and where things are going. Um, and then manage and discover targets is really where I want to spend uh, the most time on. Let's go ahead. Ooh, it looks like I have some errors here and some timeouts. Let's go ahead and stop that. And then let's jump right into setting up and configuring a, a different scan. Uh, when it comes down to using network uh, discover and setting up a discover target, um, Semantic DLP has the most complete coverage of other products. I want to take a quick step back to make sure that we remember the products that we're talking about. Let me flip back to Notepad. If you're watching the uh, first video here, um, I do a lot of time in Notepad. Everybody always laughs when I pull it up, and I think I always mention the same joke that everybody laughs when I pull it up. Maybe I need to find some new comedy bits. Um, so we're going to focus right here at this level. Net uh, data at rest. Uh, which is Network Discover and Network Protect. And I want to show you how we can set up that protection portion of things as long as that, uh, as well as that data um, discover type of thing. So um, bear with me as we jump right back into the system. All right, so this is my targets that I have set up. Pretty boring, um, I think. Uh, you'll probably have more, more information, more bytes. Hopefully not more incidences than I have. I just have some demo data set up and configured, and we'll talk our way through that. So how do I set that up? Well, let's take a look at the different targets. So a discover target is what I use to scan against. So this discovery is going to occur from my network discover server to that endpoint. Now, the question that you're going to ask is, you know, Jonathan, how many network discover servers do I need? Um, I'll give you the uh, consultant answer. It depends. Depends on how many targets, how many locations, um, and everything that I want to scan. Um, let's use the ITS example, right? We have offices in Utah. We have offices in Chicago. We have offices in um, Atlanta and our headquarters here in Grand Rapids. Um, if I had file servers at those Utah location, uh, the L Utah location, the Chicago location, and the Atlanta location, uh, I would want to set up a, a Discover server um, at those locations, so I'm not um, having all of that WAN traffic uh, happen when I actually run a Discover target or Discover scan. Thankfully, here at ITS, we just have uh, uh, our file servers in one location. 
Um, but if you're a large organization, a military uh, organization, DOD, large commercial, uh, you probably have multiple servers set up at multiple locations. Um, and we'd have to figure that out during the design phase of an engagement or a conversation. You know, how many servers do we actually need? How many discover targets would we set up, um, et cetera? So let's kind of talk about the different things that I can scan. I can scan a file system. Um, I need to have credentials and access to that file system so I can scan it. Uh, I want to be able to read the attributes so I can get the permissions that are associated with that uh, file. Um, we can also tackle Lotus Notes. If you use Lotus Notes as your email of choice, um, we can set up a, a SQL database. Now, this is not just Microsoft SQL. This is also Oracle. Um, things that I can get an ODBC connection to, we can run a scan. Um, so I want to know if I have confidential data stored out in my database or in my database. Uh, in my database and, and, and remediate that. SharePoint, we actually you can sh scan SharePoint um, and see what are on your sites, whether that's your front end site is where we'll do a lot of the scanning of SharePoint and, and say, okay, you know, Joe Smith um, posted this information on SharePoint and it was not um, allowed. Now, this is not real time scanning of SharePoint or of my database. Um, we're also not verifying that your database uh, meets a STIG or uh, your lockdown um, information that, that your organization um, applies. I know I was working with one government agency where I think the Oracle configuration document was like 35 pages. You know, we're not going to validate that you know, your, your Oracle system meets all 35 pages worth of settings. Um, what we're concerned about is that um, you have data on that. Um, if you're concerned about your systems m being in compliance, then you either either talk to um, to us about the SRAS product, the formerly known as Gideon, um, or Control Compliance Suite, which can help you know, make sure that you're in compliance. All right, uh, Exchange as well. We're allowed to scan public folders. I was working with a Sorry about that. I was working with um, uh, a hospital that was storing patient information in uh, group calendars. So they go to re re reserve a room, uh, they book that room, and then they say that you know Joe Smith is there, um, Helen Helen Smith is there, and this is her diagnosis or her problems. As you can see, that's an obvious violation of patient health confidentiality. PHI. PII, um, PHI, those types of items. And so we can scan uh, both calendars and also public folders to find information. At the endpoint, these are my laptops, and you can scan those endpoints to see what's going on. And then um, uh, I can configure my scanner that I use to, to tackle maybe a live link documentum or SharePoint system. All right, so let's go ahead and I want to edit my existing um, enforced demo data scan here. Let's go ahead and click on the edit button. Uh, always give it a name that makes sense. Uh, you know, test one, two, three is, is not a valid name in my book as, you know, someone's going to come out get, uh, after you and have no idea what's going on. Anyways, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I'm going to set up this scan, my enforced demo scan. It's going to scan um, only new or modified items in incremental scan. Um, let's go ahead and check this box here to force my next scan to be a, um, a complete scan. Now I'm going to go ahead and submit this on a schedule, and I'm going to scan it uh, weekly um, every Saturday. And we're going to start at, at 12 a.m., what we can do is then stop it at a certain time, uh, or, or set our, 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 sorry, we can stop our schedule at a certain time. Maybe I know the server will be decommissioned in six months, and I, and I want it just to stop in that six months. Um, I'll go ahead and uncheck this. Uh, this is key here, pause between these times. This would be my backup window, potentially, or maybe during the busy, busy business day. Um, that I don't want uh, excessive uh, scanning of the file systems here. So I could pause it from, you know, uh, say uh, my backup window on this server is from 2 a.m. until 3.30 every Monday, 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I don't back up on Saturday and Sunday for some reason. Maybe I'm not there. So what happened is um, the scan's going to kick off at 12 a.m. Uh, when it hits 2 a.m., um, that time zone, by the way, or that time is the time zone of the Discover server, not the time zone of the server it is scanning against. I want to point that out. So if um, if I am scanning a system in Pacific time, uh, adjust the times. Um, if all of my systems are in UTC, um, GMT, um, then um, I would not have to maybe coordinate it. Uh, it all depends on how my time zones are set up, etc., for my organization. Let's talk about the content. Uh, we have the ability to create uh, credentials. Um, I don't have any set up here, but if I did, um, I could save those credentials. Um, this allows um, maybe somebody who doesn't have access to the credentials to be able to set up the scanner, uh, even if the um, uh, the end user needs to set those up. I think I lost my train of thought, so I apologize. We're going to specify credentials here. I can either upload a file or add in additional uh, file shares manually. I want to be very careful setting this information here, both at the file size and file filter date filters, um, because then I would ignore or potentially miss uh, options or areas that I could have uh, data loss in them. This is really cool here. Uh, this allows me to then throttle the semantic DLP scan. Um, the example here being that um, I have potentially an old server or maybe the server is, is heavily utilized and I don't want my data loss prevention scan, my discover scan, to adversely affect my machine. So I can throttle both at the maximum files process per minute or the maximum um, bytes or uh, kilobytes or megabytes scan per minute. Uh, so what happened if I set this to say, you know, you know, scan a thousand files per minute? Um, the, as soon as I hit my thousand file in that minute, it would pause, wait for another, uh, wait for that minute to end, and then start back up. Um, while this is really cool, um, it can also um, increase the time on my discover scans. So if I have a very large file share that I'm scanning and I've throttled the file uh, down by bytes, by kilobytes, by megabytes, um, my scans might take quite a long time. Also I can set a threshold. So um, this content route, so the you know G drive, you know, uh, you know, file server slash corporate, for example. If I hit, you know, a thousand incidences, that's that's a match because I just know it's a terrible uh, file share and I need to move on. Uh, if you have PSTs stored out on your file shares or on your network or the target that we're doing, uh, you need to have Outlook uh, installed on that Discover server. And then we can then do a uh, discovery scan on this. Flip back here to Notepad here. Um, wrong window. Let's go ahead and close that. All right. So we have been talking the entire time on this level here, right? Network discover, data at rest. How do I deal with setting up uh, discovery and, and finding out where my confidential data is at? If I flip tabs here to protect, assuming that I'm licensed for it, I'll have this tab. We have two options. I can either quarantine that file or copy that file. So what happens is um, I find a data, I find uh, an Excel spreadsheet. And that Excel spreadsheet has uh, social security numbers on it, for example. I want to go ahead and quarantine that file and move that to a confidential share, maybe a more secured share. Uh, so that um, uh, it does not get sent out as data loss. Um, so let's go ahead and, and move that. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and move that to my enforce share. I'm going to call it core in teen. And then my credentials, because maybe I have to pass different credentials um, than my scan. And it's actually going to then quarantine that file for me. Um, what I can do is in my response rules, and we've talked briefly about that in a 
different video. But within my response rule, I can actually leave behind a, a marker file, um, oftentimes referred to as a ransom note. And that ransom note then would say, you know, uh, the whatever we want to do it, but a typical example would be the file that you're trying to access contain confidential data. If you need, a, if you still need access to that file share, or sorry, that to that file, please, please contact uh, Information Security. Um, you know, here's their email and here's their extension. For example, we can leave that behind as a response rule, a ransom note. So what I've done here is I've created a new scan. Uh, it's going to scan it on a, um, on a schedule. We're going to pause that scan between certain times. Um, here's the credentials that I'm going to use. Here's the file share that I'm going to use. Um, no throttling, and then I'm actually going to actually use prevention and quarantine those files. So let's go ahead and save that. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and start that. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to go ahead and run. And um, when I refresh this, when this page refreshes, um, we'll actually see that it will start running. Okay, uh, I had a timeout, but that the scan will run. So let's look at um, at uh, some discover targets. Right, these are scans that have run on the endpoint, and here are the incidences that have shown up. Uh, there you go. So I'm running really slow for some reason. I apologize. Might have a service that stopped for some reason. I'll have to take a look at that. But <clears throat> let's spend some time here real quickly. Um, you can see exactly the um, a, uh, policy that I violated, my match count. You do see that I have some, some credit card information. By the way, this is all demo data. It's not valid. Um, you can see uh, the target, uh, what it was set up, when that scan occurred. If it's been seen before, we can actually report against that. And then um, who is the file owner? Who actually owns that file? Now, built-in administrators is often a complicated um, way or doesn't really make sense. Uh, Symantec does have a, a additional plugin to the data loss prevention product called Data Insight. Uh, that'll be a separate video and conversation, um, but uh, allows me to really track down who's been using that file. You can see when it was created, uh, last modified, last accessed. Um, and then um, we actually see the file permissions on this file. So this is really nice because then I can start building um, workflows around this. Um, if this is an HR related file and HR is uh, has you know read write privileges and nobody else has access to it, is it a violation? Um, based on my organization, it might not be. It might not be a, a violation because HR is the only person that has access to it. So I just want to make sure that um, we, we have the permissions then to read that information. Um, you can see that file here, um, and we can go ahead and, um, and take a look at it. Um, I can change the status. I can take a look at correlations. You can see that it was found last... Um, uh, one time ago, all times, um, and you can see that built-in administrators is a bad violator here of that file scan, and you can see all of the instances of all time. Uh, I can make notes and add those into the system that are then tracked and, and, and set up, and we can work uh, incidences and we can build um, a workflow on how our organization uh, occurs and deals with, with uh, incidences. So this is a uh, semantic data loss prevention uh, as it relates to network discover and network uh, protect. I'm sorry. Yep, network protect. I, see, I still get those, those terms confused a bit. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Send me an email. If there's something that you wanted to see in this little demo and you didn't get to, uh, like I said, shoot me a call, uh, call uh, or give me an email. Talk to you later.